The NFL is quickly becoming a hate watch. America's undisputed reigning champion of sports is heading toward being more about what happens off the field than it is about what happens on the gridiron. Off-field drama and storylines are nothing new for the league, but this 2023 season sure feels like the worst one yet as the entire production seems to be sidelining the sport itself in favor of highlighting what used to be called the bullshit that happens off the field. I stopped watching the NFL with any kind of regularity after the league caved to the ransom demands of a backup quarterback, settling a lawsuit with Colin Kaepernick and paying him millions. Don't let the activist headlines rewrite history. By the time his career was done, all Cap was playing at a level of a backup quarterback, and no coach in the league is going to pick up his kind of baggage for a backup QB. But now the league is making all new kinds of headlines for different reasons, and none of them are good for the sport. From Taylor Swift's romance generating more buzz than anything happening on the field this season, to a fan who might be an NFL plant to generate a viral moment, and to a seeming increase in questionable penalties at questionable times, the NFL is feeling more fake than ever before. And it's becoming more of a tailored production put on for viewers, rather than just bringing us the competitive sport most viewers want to see. Now, this isn't our usual area of coverage for this channel, but we figure that it falls within the realm of entertainment, so why not step up in the pocket and take some downfield shots at the NFL? And just before we get into our four minute offense, remember to leave a like on the video at the end if you liked it, and let us know in the comments how you feel about the 2023 NFL stage production we're watching. Of course, you knew that we were gonna kick things off with the biggest news in the world. Taylor Swift has chosen her 37th boyfriend. In case you are unaware, and if you are, I envy you, the Queen of Pop recently struck up a romance with the Kansas City Chiefs tight end, Travis Kelsey. And who cares? Why is this news for the NFL? Well, frankly, because Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles on the first drive of his season, and there aren't any other interesting storylines going on on the field this year. So enter T-Swift. We all woke up one day, and suddenly Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey were the only thing people were talking about in regard to the NFL. And in a twist of fate that warms my heart a little bit, a lot of people called shenanigans on the love affair right from the get-go. And when you really take in all of the, albeit circumstantial, evidence, this relationship is dubious to say the least. Let's begin with T-Swift, for example. The queen of pop is also the queen of marketing. She always finds a way to be in the news even when she's not touring or releasing new music. And a lot of this marketing prowess comes from her dad. Look into that guy, by the way, if you want to see how Taylor Swift really got her start, but that's a different story. And jumping to the other half of Kel Swift, let's take a look at Travis. Right off the bat, if this isn't a completely organic, real relationship, why pick Travis Kelsey, you might ask? Well, in short, Travis Kelsey is a marketable guy who's no stranger to the spotlight. He's even had fake relationships before when he had his own celebrity dating show. He appropriates the right culture while having a bit of a white savior complex, and to top it all off, he supports the right causes at the right times. The guy is even a fake tight end. He doesn't line up with the linemen, he doesn't run block, he's just a third or fourth wide receiver. But labeling him a tight end ensures he gets to be called the best tight end of all ever, instead of saying the truth, which is that he's a good receiver. But what really makes this whole thing reek more of a marketing deal than roses and lavender scented candles is the timing of their blossoming love. This whole relationship kicked off right near the beginning of the season, just after Taylor's massive Eras Tour ended, just before the theatrical release of her Eras Tour movie, just before the release of Travis Kelsey's brother's documentary which Travis features heavily in, just as their mom is filmed with Jake from State Farm wearing a hat promoting her son's podcast, and just at the release of the newest string of TV commercials featuring Kelsey. Wow. Unbelievable timing. Really. And the coverage of this has been completely shameless. With Travis's mom, Donna, hmm, put the rumors to rest. I think they are officially a couple and Mahomes gives him time right to Kelsey. Arguably the best tight end in NFL history. Travis Kelsey, you see, just kind of extra time, but they just flat out leave Travis Kelsey uncovered on the little wheel route right on time. And Right on time is correct. Imagine that, right after running the intro about Taylor Swift and connecting her to her new bow on the field, the very next play the defense just forgets to cover the best tight end in the game who gains some nice yardage. Yeah, right on time.
But why? Why go through all of this and pull these two celebrities into the mix? Money, of course! The league has been unabashed in its courting of Swifties and trying to bring a new demographic into the mix to increase viewership numbers and peddle more merchandise to an all-new customer base. Back to Taylor Swift, the Taylor effect is real. Travis Kelsey gained almost 900,000 new followers on Instagram. There's been a 400% spike in Kelsey jersey sales. And then there's this, hundreds of orders for customized Chiefs jerseys like that one. And sadly for people who love the sport, it seems to have worked out swimmingly, meaning this is probably far from the last marketing stunt of its kind that we'll be subjected to. Really looking forward to seeing Khloe Kardashian beef back up and try out for a D-line position with the Rams so she can stay relevant, or for Beyonce to start working as a linesman. Fake relationship or not, this isn't football. This is the kind of entertainment tonight gossip drama and celebrity worship that people watch football to get away from. But yet another form of escapism is beginning to show all the hallmarks of a hijacked brand, just like we see in modern iterations of fantasy shows. Where things are changed and adapted to appeal to a new demographic, while the old demographic who solely supported the brand up to this point is told to shut the fuck up and take it. And just as a side note, have you ever met Swifties and heard what they think about her three dozen exes? This guy will be tarred and feathered and hung up from the goalpost when their contract expires. I mean, when they break up. Then, just a few weeks later, once the Travis Swift fervor started to die down, we were non-consensually introduced to this passionate fan who was caught on camera having a psychotic episode in support of her hometown Chargers. Now right off the bat, something doesn't feel right with this one simply because this is the Chargers we're talking about. No one cares about the Chargers this much. So the camera cuts to her a bunch of times during the game as she continues to melt down emotionally at every moment on the field. Then the memes started flowing that night. Then the media attention followed the next day, and there were interviews the next morning where she talked in depth about how she's handling the naysayers who are calling her an NFL plant. How on earth does she receive all of this supposed fame and backlash, and most importantly, perspective on the matter, 12 hours after going viral? And she was probably asleep for at least six of those hours too. How has she heard all of this outlandish backlash in that amount of time? And then the next week, she's halfway across the country in the front row to cheer on the Chargers and look at that, the cameras find her again. So this person travels from California to Missouri for a Chargers game? Sure, that seems normal. And I'm sure it had nothing to do with getting this super fan in the same stadium with the other totally organic fan, Taylor Swift, who was there that day. And then we find out that this super fan was once a Vikings fan. Well, that's something. But I mean, it's not really that big a deal. What's weirder about it is that less than 24 hours after we ever learned this woman exists, people were coming out of the woodworks to talk about how completely real she was. People were here to let everyone know that her son played for the Vikings peewee team, so that explains the jersey. Of course, when that comes out 10 hours after she already attributed the picture to her growing up in Minnesota as a Vikings fan, it looks a little weird that a bunch of people are popping up and vigorously defending this woman who's apparently completely unaffiliated with the NFL. And less than a day after her meme was born. It almost kind of feels like a PR campaign that was ready to help push a story and swat aside anyone who doubted the narrative. But having dual allegiances isn't really that big a deal in this whole fiasco. The fan went on to clarify that she's been a Chargers fan for 20 years ever since she moved to LA. Well, the Chargers were in fucking San Diego for 14 of those years, so that's also something. Yeah, sure, the Chargers were the closest team to LA at the time, but LA and San Diego are not that close to each other, and the commute is a real bitch, so that's still just another question mark. Oh, but look, Matt Leinert is here to weigh in on the matter and he confirms that the fan is real, and she's a diehard fan from Orange County. Well, I can confidently tell you from personal experience that no one who lives in Orange County would ever call it LA, ever. And even the NFL putting out stories about this fan being a plant would be part of a PR campaign like this. So something stinks with this whole thing, and it's not just the Chargers record in close games this year. And the goal of planting some super fan like this and giving her airtime is to capture a viral moment and show viewers what the ideal consumer, I mean fan, looks like. 
Someone who just gets wholly consumed with the league, with their team, who needs to buy all the merch and go to all the games. Even the ones halfway across the country. Money is no object when it comes to rabid fandom, right consumer? And there's plenty of cause for concern with the on the field stuff too. Foul calls are softer than ever, and it's starting to look more and more like flag football, and just in time for the announcement that flag football is coming to the Olympics. Yippee. And the timing of these soft penalties has been grabbing negative headlines as well. I mean, the last two Super Bowls both came down to questionable penalties right at the end of the game that directly led to the eventual Super Bowl winners taking the lead. James Bradbury, they're gonna say he grabs him. He's got his left hand on his back. I don't know. My, I think you let him play. Obviously, Mahomes thought he saw it. I think, I don't know. I think you let him play. Ten more years of this kind of downward trend, and the phrase, let them play, will be a thing of the past. And on this subject, boy do the Chiefs always seem to get just what they need to win and remain marketable. Which is important when Patrick Mahomes and Travis McKelsey are in every other commercial on television. Just lofts it up in the air and interference call is on the way against Snead. There is no foul for passing the third. Oh, no. So here's Snead after the play. He takes his helmet off on the field. And They're now telling you have a helmet off, and you would penalize them after the change of possession, and that is a foul for that. Now you saw one official say, put your put helmet, your helmet on. on. And even an official told him to put it back on. By the way, how much fucking money does State Farm make to run this many commercials? My gosh. With all of these different issues coalescing into the spectacle that is the NFL in current year, it just feels fake as fuck. It feels less and less like we're watching a competitive sport with the world's best athletes, and more like we're watching a stage production meant for a 14-year-old girl. And for that reason, we at Hate Watchers, the experts in hate watching, are unsurprisingly giving the NFL in 2023 a hate watch designation. But we don't come empty-handed with our criticism this time, and if you're looking for a great watch recommendation, then look no further than college football. Sure, you still have the same issue of worsening foul calls, and Coach Prime has played the role of the T-Swift prima donna this season to a lesser degree. But the sport and rivalries and traditions go back a hundred years. There's real passion from everyone involved from the players to the coaches to the fans, and it lasts all season long, not just toward the end when the playoffs are around the corner. And the game isn't littered with a bunch of slacking, over-important millionaires. Cam Newton decides not to dive in there. And yeah, he backed away football. from it. He, he jumped away instead of jumping into the pile. Yep. Not yet, at least. But the effects of those new NIL deals are probably fast approaching. And college football is its own production, to be sure. But it's more real than the NFL can ever be again. Now, to clarify a few things and save some angry typing in the comments, yes, the NFL has always been a highly marketed production, but our point is that it's the worst it's ever been this year. And yes, the NFL is still football and it's the king of sports and a giant moneymaker. And this video isn't meant in any way to try and turn people away from the league. We know there's a lot of people who like the NFL and they just want to watch their team and they don't like all the superfluous fluff either. That's cool with us, we get it, no judgment here. We just wanted to talk about what we see going on with the league overall, especially from the perspective of an entertainment production. We have no interest in peddling gossip or live tracking the every move of celebrities. But we do enjoy calling out bullshit where we see it, and especially when that bullshit is being propagated to separate well-meaning fans from their money. And lastly, to be clear, this video is speculation, not accusation, and this could all be 100% wrong. Or 100% right, it doesn't matter. What matters is that this is the perception we have of the league right now, and we're far from alone in seeing things this way. And football is an incredible sport that's positively changed millions of lives and taught innumerable young kids valuable lessons. So you hate to see the sport starting to drown in this much crap. Do you think any of this is real? Does anyone care about the damn Chargers this much? Should Roger Goodell move forward with an OnlyFans account to really put the NFL hype train into another gear? Let us know in the comments below. And for those who have been with the channel for a while, let us know if you like us talking about other things than just your typical television shows and movies. Do you want us hate watching more cultural events like big time trials, big time sporting events, etc.? Be sure to let us know. And remember to like the video if you liked it and subscribe to Hate Watchers for reviews of current shows and movies. Thank you for putting the NFL in concussion protocol with us today and we'll catch you on the next one.